Hi, I'm Tim Scheib, husband of one, father of five, realtor, and this is Behind the Sign. What do we do to get our home ready to list for sale? The first thing that my clients do most of the time is they call me up and they say, hey, we're thinking about selling our home here in three months or two months or next year or whenever. And they ask, you know, what are some of the things that we need to do? Can you walk through and help us out? As a real estate agent, I want my clients spending money on the things that they need to do that make sense. So it is definitely my interest to go to the house and say, do this and do that. For example, uh, I could go to a house and there could be a small drywall crack in the ceiling. You know, someone might say, oh, we need to fix that because it drives them nuts. They see it every day. Well, the fact of the matter is, the minute you go up on a ceiling and you fix a little tiny crack in the drywall, like I'm talking a small one, a big one, obviously, you need to hire someone to come out and fix it. But if there's just a little one, you know, it may not be worth the money doing it. And definitely don't try and do something like that yourself unless you are a professional in that industry because you're going to make it look 10 times worse. Oftentimes, like when you build a house, you do your final walkthrough with a the builder. They'll look at something and they'll say, you know, if we try and fix that, we might make it look worse. And sometimes that's an excuse not to do the work, but sometimes that's the absolute truth. So you want to make sure that you're doing the right things for your home to increase the value rather than damaging the value or damaging the, the cosmetics of the house and then having to hire somebody else to come in and fix it and spend twice as much money. So what I'll do is I'll go to the house and I will recommend the things that they spend their money on and the things that maybe they should not spend their money on. If there's ever a defect in the house, a safety issue or something, I always tell them you definitely want to take care of that because once you sell it and you get an inspection, that's probably going to come up. Uh, if there is something that's a, you know, eh, I tell my clients, don't mess with it, wait for the inspection, just be prepared to pay for it if it does come up on the inspection because obviously you want to turn the home over to someone that's safe. You don't want to have any issues come up after the sale where they come back and sue you because you didn't do something right. Um, it's always the best thing to do is to follow your gut on what's right. If it feels right, do it. Don't cut anything out that you would not want cut out of a deal if you were on the other end. Now, initially coming into the spring, you want to make sure that your yard is in good shape. You know, after the winter, it gets beat up. There's garbage, the snow melts. Um, you got dog soils all over the yard. You want to make sure that your yard is picked up, clean, get the sticks, get the branches, uh, all the weeds pulled. Treat your lawn if you want to treat your lawn. Make sure that it's nice and green and mowed. Uh, the landscaping is very important because when you walk up to the house, the first thing you see is the front of the home. And if you walk up to the front of the home and you see the landscaping blocks are leaning or you've got a small retaining wall that looks like it's about to fall down and you've got weeds and there's half rock, half mulch, and it's just kind of a cluster, that's not very appealing to the eye. And that's going to move them into the house. And that non-appeal, when you walk up to the front of the house, continues as you go into the house. Uh, if your front door, your weather stripping is chewed up and it's just been kind of beat up or your front door has nicks in it and it's just not looking the best or it hasn't been repainted for 15 years and you're like, all right, you walk up to the front door and you see that mess. The minute they walk into the house, they're looking for other things like that. You want that first impression when they come up to that front door to be the absolute best impression. The more they can walk into the house feeling like it's taken care of, the less they're gonna look at the little things. And we all have little things in our houses, whether it's the, the trim got nicked here, or you know, there's so many little things in a house that will draw someone's eye if they're looking for it. May not draw their eye if they're not looking for it. So we wanna make sure the front of the house is in great, great condition. That is first and foremost, clean your windows, do all that fun stuff. As far as the inside goes, it is such a relief to me when I walk up, walk into a home and it is clean, vacuumed consistently. You know, your trim boards don't have dust sitting on top of them. Uh, your kitchen counter is not covered with crumbs and sticky. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of times I'll come in and I'll put my arms on the counter to talk to a client and they're sticky. You don't want any of that. Uh, when it comes time to sell your home, you want that all taken care of. You want to declutter as much as possible. You know, when it comes to your countertops, only have a few things out because the more open it feels, the cleaner it feels, the better. One thing that you know I've I heard growing up and I've heard in my market, I hear more on like HGTV and that type of stuff. Take down family photos, nothing personal. Don't depersonalize the house. To me, 
and the way I've read my clients for the last 15 years, it's okay to have a few family pictures up. It helps them understand that a family can live in the house and it feels warm. I know here in the Midwest, that's important to a lot of people. If you've got a whole hallway full of pictures of family, like, yeah, maybe reduce it down to a couple. But I don't think it's necessary to take down all family photos in a house because really, honestly, when I'm walking through a house, my clients might look at the wall and, oh, that's a cute family or, you know, something along those lines where that makes them know that a family can live there and it makes it become more of a real thing because it is a home, not a doctor's office. We don't want it to feel like a doctor's office. We want it to feel like a home. Uh, now, that's my opinion. Uh, I know that I've gone on listing appointments and they're like, oh, well, the other agent said take it all down. You know, that's their opinion. I like the idea of the thought of a family being in a home because when I move in, I'm bringing my family. So that's something important to me. Uh, as far as like appliances go in your kitchen, so the two major places to spend money are the two most costly places, your kitchen and your master bathroom and just your bathrooms. Those are the places that, you know, cost the most to do the renovations, but they can bring you the most value on your home. My suggestion on that is do those items while you live there so you get to enjoy them for a little while before you sell it. Uh, that's key. I've had so many clients that didn't do anything until right before they sell it, like a garage door. They didn't have power to the garage. They didn't have an opener on the garage. They went 30 years with it that way. They opened and closed the garage like this, and they had one of those yellow fiberglass doors. I'll tell you what, when they switched it out, getting ready to sell, they put power in there, they put a new door on, they're like, we should have done this a long time ago. I'm like, yeah, because <laughs> then you would have been able to use it, right? So make sure that if you're putting big money into a house, like the kitchen and the bathroom, try and do it as early as you can before you sell so you actually get to enjoy it. But those are the major items that are going to bring value to your house if you're just doing a full-out renovation. Uh, this market today is kind of crazy, and it's a little bit weird. Uh, houses are selling. Here, I'll give you a, a prime example. House wasn't listed yet. It was Listing price was $345. I wrote an offer on this house for three forty-five. dollars um, Unfortunately, we didn't get it. Uh, they accepted another offer without telling us that they had other offers and giving us a chance to come back. But the funny part about it was, um, you know, I was told that, yeah, they accepted another offer. And I'm like, what, what? And he goes, well, you know, your lowball offer wasn't good enough. That's the idea behind today's market. They're calling a full price offer a lowball offer. So in today's market, if you want to sell your home, it isn't quite as necessary in circumstances to do all this lavish stuff to your home. If you have a very nice home in a good area, it's not as important to declutter as it might be if you're going against a lot of other competition. Uh, there are times when I go into a house and I, let's say there's someone who's got a bunch of little things that they want to do to their house. Maybe let's just say they can't afford it or they don't want to afford it and they want to move. They're ready to just sell their house. Well, in today's market, there's good enough equity in the house where I'll tell them, like, look, you can put all this money into the house and you might recoup your money. You're not going to make extra money doing it. Let's just list your house as it is and sell it. And it has been easily done in this market. And we are in a very odd and unique market where houses sell very quickly. And if we can avoid dumping money into a house... And at the end of the day, we net the same money as we would have if we would have dumped some money into the house. Then let's just list it and let's get it sold and not worry about it. You know, there are plenty of buyers out there that are jumping on houses, even if there's work that needs to be done, because they say, oh, well, I can do this work myself and pocket the equity that I get from it. Definitely true. I would say that in this market is unique. You may not need to do a dang thing to your house. So make sure that you call an agent first and have them come in walk you through the house, go through the things to do, not to do. That agent might surprise you and say, you got a beautiful home, you don't need to do a thing. And I, I went to one the other day and they said, well, we need to do some decluttering before pictures. I'm like, no, you don't. Looks good enough. We'll make the pictures look great. We'll get plenty of traction and we'll sell your house probably for more than what we list it for. And that's the world we're living in today. So number one and the only one, call an agent. Have them walk through your house, an experienced agent, have them walk through your house, go through it with you, and tell you exactly what you do and don't need to do. 